So here we are at Manzanar, which is in between Independence and Lone Pine. And there's the guard tower that was over the uh, internment camp for the uh, Japanese during World War II. And that's all that they've left. And you can see it's right next to the Sierras. I'll be uh, going to see if there's anything else to take a look at. So I found the uh, turn to uh, come into Manzanar. And uh, this sign says that it's Manzanar War Relocation Center. And uh, that's what they did during the war, was they took the Japanese away from their family homes and they put them in places like this. And I know that the uh, we had a cottage on Bigwin Island in Ontario and the hotel, the inn, built a lot of their, their walkways, covered walkways, throughout the resort were built by uh, Japanese prisoners during the war. So here it talks about uh, First Street in Manzanar in 1942, and it's the uh, how it shows how they were living at the time, and the buildings themselves are are gone except that they've put white uh, rocks to show where the different buildings had been. I'm going to see what else I can see. I've uh, come over to the visitor center and I believe that these are cherry blossoms which uh, the Japanese call sakura. And there's this hangar type building which is the uh, actual visitor center so I'll go check it out. saw the video at uh, Manzanar. It uh, had people who had been incarcerated in there telling their uh, story as to, you know, their experiences with their families. And, oh my goodness, I was in tears. Um, basically, what happened was they were told they were putting in, being taken to these relocation uh, centers for their own protection but as they commented or one of them commented uh, if it was for their own uh, protection then how come the uh, the rifles were pointed like were facing them they weren't being protected by a circle of people facing out the military was busy facing into them instead. And uh, they also showed a picture of a little boy um, next to a soldier. And the soldier had a bayonet. And they said, why on earth did they have bayonets? Like, really? And some of the Japanese people did actually try to sign up for the military after Pearl Harbor and uh, they were refused. And uh, later on they gave them a questionnaire and it said, will you be willing to be part of the armed forces? And that was one question. Then another question was, do you uh, swear off your allegiance to the Japanese Emperor? But for the people who were American-born Japanese, they never had an allegiance to the Japanese Emperor, so they couldn't swear it off. And for the Japanese who had been born in Japan, if they swore off allegiance to the Emperor, they would be homeless. They would have no country because they weren't allowed to be Americans. 
and it was a simply dreadful thing that happened to these people. They had no privacy when they were at these camps. Uh, they lost whatever they had had before. In 1943, they were allowed to uh, go to other, to leave the camp, some of them, but they couldn't go to the three states on the west coast. They couldn't go to California, Oregon, or Washington. They had to go somewhere else. And when they got to the new place, people said to them, go home, Jap. And as the one said, he would have loved to have been able to go home to California, but wasn't allowed to go home to California. And this sort of treatment of people is just terrible. And I really hope that everyone does their part to ensure this never ever happens again because we are one. We are one group and we should, you know, try and help each other. Okay, bye.